Hi, I'm Eric with Nuttall Sewing Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm creating this video for one of our clients that is trying to take a hand applique pattern and she wants to digitize it in for embroidery so she can use her embroidery machine to create the project. So I'll show you, I don't have all the information, I'm just going off of email that she sent me. So this is actually uh, the blocks that she wants to work with. And more specifically, what I'm going to be working with, at least, is going to be down in here. So this block here, I'm going to use this as the block to reference for my video. Once you've learned to create this block, you can create any of the blocks that are in this um, pattern. So that's what we're going to be working with today. So I'm going to go in, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our Floriani software. And here we go. This is, oh, Kathy Quinn popped up. So hi, Kathy. Wish, wish we could have you here with us doing our events. But right now it's January 2021. So COVID is still a thing. And hopefully by the time we get through with this video getting out there, we can get back to normal and do all of our events and all the fun stuff. But we're going to create a new design. And once I've clicked on new design, the first thing I want to do is I want to pull in the background image. Now, there's lots of ways to create this design, you guys. I'm going to focus on using manual digitizing tools instead of auto digitizing tools because if, I was, if I'm going to take the time to make this video, and I want to make sure that every step can be covered. When we use auto digitizing, you're allowing the computer to do most of the work. hard part with the computer doing most of the work is it's, it's not always, it doesn't always see what we see. So I really think it's important to learn how to use the manual digitizing tools because once you do, you can create anything. So we're gonna focus on that. So up here, these are our digitizing tools. But before I can start to actually digitize and make that design, I need to load the image that I wanna work with as a background. So on the left-hand side, there's a section that says um, backdrop tool. I'm gonna to click on that. And then I'm gonna go in and we're gonna find the, the image that we wanna work with. There's our image. So this is the printout that came with her patterns. So I need to take this printout and turn it all into stitches um, that are for applique. Over on the right hand side, when this comes up, I'm gonna just rotate this. I'm gonna click, this, there's a quick 90 degree rotation. I'm just gonna click that until this is how I want it to be vertically. So I'm there. Um, the next, next thing that I'm going to do now that this is the way that I want this, I'm going to uh, turn on my grids so when I zoom in I can see this and the reason I'm turning on my grids I, I don't always like to work with the grids on but I want to get that little bottom part Kind of lined up straight so it's pretty straight pretty close and I wouldn't worry too much because after these are digitized turned into stitches you're gonna be able to go in and, and um, Rotate the design do the things you need to do, but I, I like to get things set up the way that I expect it to finish out beforehand so I'm just doing a little bit of a rotation. It looks like we're pretty straight. I am going to turn off the grids now just so you guys can see this a little bit easier. I'm gonna zoom or move up here. So uh, we're going to take, and I'm going to look at kind of a bigger view of this design. It's labeled, so this is A, B, and so on. So it actually has kind of a roadmap for us in the way that this should stitch out. Um, G being the last, so it's going to go over the top of all this, which totally makes sense. But there are some things that are different. I would do these Bs are going to be the thing that I'm going to focus on first. And because I want that to be laid down so the A can go on top of that next and so forth. So I'm just going to look at this and kind of map that out. Now these flowers are not exactly identical. We can tell that because if I look at this one here on the right hand side, and it's got those kind of two little petals coming up and then it goes into B. Well, that's different than the one that's up here. So we could approach this a lot of different ways. We could make one flower that we really, really love and then we could just copy and paste it. Um, that's one way. Or really these two here, they are pretty much identical. And actually, as we look at this whole design, this right side and this left side, they're just a mirror image of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this particular flower. And once I've got that down as the B, I will create another one that I will copy and paste and then just move it over here and we'll, we'll mirror image it. And you'll see that process. It's going to be really, really easy. So that's the way that we're going to attack this. And, and so I kind of like to figure some things out beforehand before I get started. 
But here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in now that we have our design. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to zoom in on the software. And I'm going to go up here to my digitizing tools. I'm going to click on the down uh, drop down menu. All the way to the right, there's an option that says applique stitch. Now again, there's lots of ways to do this. Mine isn't the only way. I'm just trying to um, get this to a point where you can follow it and get your project taken care of and those questions answered that um, have been asked. On the right hand side under properties there's one that says applique type. I'm going to change that. I'm going to switch that to say blanket because we want it to be a blanket stitch. We can also change now the width of that blanket stitch. So what I mean by that is if I were to go in and I'm not going to explain what I'm doing right here um, just yet simply because I want to keep everything focused on what we're working on. But if I were to go in and I was to create an image, whatever that image may be. If I create that image, right now if I zoom in, you can see this is now a satin stitch. Had I selected blanket and hit apply, which I did not do, I should have hit apply, it would have turned it into a blanket stitch, okay, which is what we want. But we may want to do something a little bit different. Maybe we like this, but we want maybe the applique width of those stitches to be a little bit longer. So I can change that. I'm going to go to like a five millimeter and maybe 5.5 on here. And I can hit apply and that'll make those longer. So it's really everything that you're, you're going to find out, you guys, everything that you want to do is really, it's designer's choice. We get to make all of those changes. So if you want those stitches to be a little bit wider, go for it. So I'm going to go back in and we're going to pretend that we didn't even take that little detour. I'm going to open up my my digitizing tool and I'm going to select again applique stitch under properties if I want to change anything underneath here I can but so I'm going to go to blanket stitch I'm going to leave it at the default just for what I'm doing again if you want it wider make it wider it's whatever you feel comfortable with I would personally make it a little bit wider but that's up to you once I hit apply it's telling the system that we want every time we select at least while the software is operating currently that we want whatever settings we make to be applied to anything that we choose to do as an applique. So I think that's perfect. Um, I'm going to turn on a fabric, but then I'm actually going to turn it off later. The reason that I'm turning this fabric on is just to show you the function. I'm going to click white because those are going to be white in the flowers themselves. So white fabric. So I went into fabric. The little dots allow me to select that. And again, I'm going to hit apply. Apply means that it's not a one-time thing. This is what we want to do until we um, switch something over there and reapply it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just go through and we're going to digitize this. Now let me explain something. I'm going to turn off the image over here. There's a way to toggle view backdrop. I'm going to turn that off. See, we can turn it on and off. It's still there. It's just, it's hidden. I want you to see how this tool works. Uh, if I go in and again the tool that we're using is the manual digitizing with applique if I do a left click simple left clicks it's just going to do straight lines if I hold the control key C T R L on my keyboard and do left clicks it does curves understanding the basic principles of a regular left click and a control left click you can make any design that you desire and then to end this there's lots of ways to do it I'm gonna focus on rather than talking about all the different options I'm just gonna focus on the icons I find that to be easier for most people when they're first starting so over here on the left there's an option that says close shape I would close that shape and what it's going to do is it's going to put those stitches in and you can see it also puts the fabric in as well okay so that's how that would work now the reality is up here we have undos so here and the way I have mine set up, there's undos there. The reality is I don't necessarily want that fabric to show the way that it did. And that's because once I have the fabric on here, I want to be able to see the A to digitize that as well. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go in. We're going to quickly digitize this using left click. I'm going to start here. And as I get up into here, this is these all have just a slight curve to them. So I'm going to hold my control key down on my, on my keyboard. And as I go through this, you guys, I'm just going to take and it's going to be pretty fast. I don't need to be perfect on here because I'm the designer at this point. If I wanted to change a leaf and I wanted it to look a little bit different, and down here I just did a, a left click 
I'm going to left click to come straight across. Or if you mess up, you can hit backspace on here. So I could do a backspace and that will move me back. I, if I want to come straight across this here, that's fine. I can come across here using left clicks and control left clicks. But all we're going to do is we're going to go through here. And again, if I want to make this petal, for instance, a little bit wider, I can do that because this image that's back behind here, it's not going to be there when we're when it's when we actually go to applique this on our fabric. Our fabric or our block that we're doing is going to be just a piece of fabric. So this particular project can be done fairly quickly because I don't have to have it perfect. If 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 you do, that's fine. You can take the time and maybe, you know, zoom in and put more effort into this. But I think the sew out is going to be awesome either way. So I'm going to go through here and again, I'm doing control clicks around these curves. And when I go on the straight lines, I'm just doing left clicks, regular left clicks. They're both left clicks, but holding my control key on my keyboard is what does the curves. When I get to a point where I want to do straight lines, I just do I let go of the control key and I just do a left click. So we're just working our way around this. It's again, it's it's actually super simple. If I want to come down further and then up in there, I can do that because I am the one creating this. So I'm the creator. I get to choose how I want this to really turn out. So I'm coming in there a little bit and then I'm going to come over here and maybe I want to come straight up into here. It's up to you. So I wouldn't stress over that being exactly on there for this particular project. I have other projects that I need it to be perfect. Now, let's say in this area I did that first click was down a little bit lower. I want the system to close this for me. And the reason that I always want the system, meaning the computer, to close it, because if I came down here and I put a little click here or one up here, I'm going to have a funky little thing happening where it, where they meet. If I just leave this and I come over and I choose close, it's going to close that perfectly on there for me. Now, you can see the big wide area, right? Here's the big wide area. I could adjust this. Let's say I was too low and we can see the image behind there. On the left hand side, I can select this, but then there's also an option, the third icon down, where I can go and I can choose to edit the path. This now shows me all the clicks that I made to create this design. If I want to go in and I want to move one of those little nodes that I made, like this one, up, we can grab this. Those are starting endpoints that I'm grabbing right there, the, the red and the, the green. But I can move that up and I can even move this up and that's now going to move my stitches up. So again, you can go in and make changes to your, your image afterward. That's all the way done. The reason that I don't want the fabric showing right now is it's covering that A um, piece that I need to digitize as well. So on the right hand side, I can just go back into fabrics. I'm actually going to select the design. This is our select tool over here on the left, the arrow. I'm gonna select the design and now I'm going to go under fabrics and I'm going to actually put none because I really don't need those showing on there. And I'm going to apply that. The reason I'm applying that is because I don't want the fabric showing at all anymore. So in here, we have our stitches. I'm going to hide away the, the background view. And what I want you guys to see is over here on the right hand side, I have a little plus arrow under my sequence view. And if I click the plus, it's now expanding what's actually happened. I can click it again. You're going to see there's actually three different options or three different things that are going on. We have a placement stitch, we have a tack down stitch, and we have the finish stitch. Up top, if I hit my play key, it'll simulate the sewing. So that's what we're, that's what I wanted to do because I want you guys to see what happens. And this is what's really cool about using the applique digitizing tool. Otherwise, if I was just going to do this and not use that tool, I would have to go in and I would have to actually digitize this as a straight stitch line and then re-digitize it, or the better thing is to copy and paste, copy and paste, make another line, copy and paste, make another line, and change the values. So this does all three of those steps in one, so it's really pretty awesome. If we look at anything that we don't like, we can change it. See this little thing going on down here? Everything's kind of straight across, and then I did a curve. Again, 
you're in control. If you like that, leave it. If you don't, click on it. You can go in, reshape. This is the node that we used. I'm going to right click on this because we can and I can change that into a line. If I change it to a line, it's now a straight stitch. So I did that by right clicking on the line on the on the sorry, the node and just changing it into a line. And now it's consistent with the others. So again, if there's something in there that you want to change, you're in control, feel free to go ahead and do that. Let's watch this just do a quick sew out. So up top, we're going to simulate the sewing stitches. You can adjust the speed. I'm going to turn it up just so you guys can see it. Simulate the sewing. So the very first color it's going to do, that's your placement stitch. That's showing you where the applique is going to go. That second color is red. It's now the tack down stitch. It's going to, once you've placed the fabric, so it's placed down on there, the applique, the white fabric that's going to go on the back, the black, sorry, fabric. Remember, there's black fabric in the background, so your white fabric. Once you place that, it's going to go on there and it's going to tack it down. And then finally, the third stitch is the finishing stitch. It's your blanket stitch because that's what we chose. So it's really that simple to do. And all we're going to do is repeat this process on the other flowers. So I'm going to go in and create um, the right flower. I'm not going to have you sit there and watch me do all the creation on that So, because I don't think it's necessary. I do think it's really good practice uh, to go in and have to do things repetitively. So I like this as a learning opportunity. Um, so I'm going to go in and create this right one and then we'll come back. I'll show you after I've created it how I'm going to uh, copy paste it, do all the things I need to do to bring it over here. So I'm going to put this on pause on the record. I'm going to create that and then we're going to go to the next step. Okay, so we now have two um, base layers of the petals created. You can see this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and then we're going to we're going to copy and paste and move it over. One thing I do want to remind you about is when we went from this area here and we made then I selected different tools. Remember, you always have to go back in and grab the tool that you want to work with. So I did have to go in and grab the digitizing tool for applique stitch. So I'm going to take this little guy here. So I've got my select tool selected. We're going to select that guy on there. There's several ways that you can do this. Um, again, I'm going to stick with icons. Up in the top, there's a copy and there's a paste. So when I did that, that just pasted a second copy onto here. And one way that I know that that happened is if I look over to the right in my sequence view, I now have three petals instead of just two. Now the next thing that I want to do, and this is really cool, up top there's flip horizontally. If I click that, because these are a mirror image of each other, it flipped it horizontally and now I can go in and I'm just going to drag this over to the other side. So I'm going to grab this little baby, pull it over, and if you look, it's a perfect match. So I'm going to just go and drop it right on top of this and that one's done as well. So it kept these the same color because they are a, a copy and a paste. This one also would be done the same color. So we could do some things to kind of change that. I personally like to do all of my appliques, even embroidery, I like to do them individually, meaning I like to finish this one out um, and then move on to the next and next and so forth, which it's going to allow me to do. So let's just do a quick recap. I'm gonna to toggle the backdrop view off so you can see this. When I hit the play button, this is now the sequence and the way it's going to stitch out. So it's going to do tack downs for all three of these individually, meaning it's going to finish the first petal, which is the way I like to do it. And the reason that I like to do it uh, individually instead of just layer it, stacking all three of them on is um, it allows for us to really get the most precise stitching possible. And with applique, I think that's really important. You don't want to have it missing an area because understand when you embroider, things can shift, things can move. If that were the case, I would rather have my next applique like the one that you're seeing here I'd rather have my my stitching hit the fabric perfectly versus a possible shifting that could occur if I start placing different things in different areas all the time it's preference anything that I tell you I like to do is what I like to do it's not a rule you don't have to follow it it's just the way that it works and but I, I can say this in our store 
um, when people see some of the samples that I'm able to make, they they always have all these questions of how do you keep everything so flat with your embroidery? Why do, you know why why don't you have a lot of puckers or any puckers at all? And I definitely have some rules that I choose to follow. So I'll throw those into the video here and there. But reality is, you got to do what you like and and what works best for you. So that's how it's going to applique those three. Pretty simple, very easy. Um, not a lot of complication to it. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in and let me turn back. I'm going to toggle the backdrop view back on. And you could do the slow redraw with that on, by the way, the simulated stitching. So now what we need to do is we're going to do just some A's on here. Again, I'm going to choose to do this one by itself, how it is, and then I'll make these. Um, I am going to manually do these. We could go into shapes and do it and have a little more perfect shape. But based off of the pattern, I don't think these are supposed to be perfect. So I'm going to follow that theory, at least for me. So I'm going to go back up into the digitizing tool. We're going to grab our applique stitch. I'm going to decide where I want to go. I'm going to pick a spot. I'm going to go in and now I'm just going to hold control all the way around. Now, one thing that I would make sure that I do, I want to be to the outside of these other stitches because I need them to be covered, right? So when I'm doing this, I want to probably, maybe if I want, I could even go up a little bit higher. So I'm just going to make sure because I don't want these stitches showing at all in here. And it's pretty simple. That's as far as I needed to go. And again, I'm holding control. That's how I'm getting that curve around this. And I'm just going to go around this here. These are going to be in layers. So your fabric's going to be layered. And then we're going to come up and we're going to let the system close it off by choosing the close, re, uh, the close shape option here. So that one's done. And I can toggle this, this off so you can see it. So now we have this. And again, remember, these stitches are going to be covered by fabric. And then these are going to stitch over the top onto there. So we have that one there. Um, I could copy and paste this other one in after I create this one, but uh, I'm just going to do it because I don't think personally that's necessary. I think it's it's so quick and so easy. And again, these tools make everything simple. If you understand how to use the manual digitizing tools, you can create whatever it is that you want to create, you guys. So I'm going to go in through here. I'm going to let that close it off. Is it exactly the way it was on there? I, I don't know. If I don't like that, that little bump that's in there, go and change it. You're in control. This is you. So if I wanted to bring that down because I did a left click there, which is a straight line, I could bring it down. I could also go in. Last time we changed it to uh, a line, I could change this to a cusp, a cusp node, which would uh, can make it, uh, well, you can switch it. Sorry, not cusp, but to smooth um, or symmetrical. That's going to make it now to where it arcs. So you can change those just by right clicking on them. Once you have it, you just hit enter and you're good to go. So this guy is now finished. So we have another piece that's done. And so now I'm just going to zoom over here again. I could have copied and pasted the next one on top, but I'm not worried about it. It's just really easy to do. So we're going to grab our tool and we are just creating the layers of applique. I'm going to go back and just start this again. A little bit higher so we are just creating these layers of applique and manual digitizing tools I'm telling you just learn how to use them you'll love them and it, and it makes it, it basically takes off any restrictions so we're going to close that baby up and this one is now its own as well so that's what we have so far and we're just doing layers and layers and individual pieces so next we're going to look at the, the entirety of the design and decide what's next. We've done the A's, we've done the B's, so it looks like we're on to the C's. Pretty simple. So I'm going to take and we are going to do the C's. Now, we, we're, at some point we're going to have to decide how we want to work these little stitched stems. Um, I would probably stitch them first um, or actually maybe second. We'll decide that because we can move it around and do what we want to do. But again, these are, these are an exact uh, copy, so mirror image. So I could do this one, mirror image, or copy paste, and just turn it over here. That is what I'm going to do. Or I can do the, the right one. It's, it's really up to me. It doesn't matter which one I do. So I'm going to go in, and we're going to start. And I'm just going to go through on here. 
and I'm holding control now. The first click that I did was just a, a regular left click because it's a straight uh, line at the end to come to that point. So I'm just coming through here. And when I get down, I'll zoom in, when I get down to this little area down here, I'm going to do just a left click without holding control and then I'm going to let the system close those up. So as of right now, this is what we just created. So that one's done. And we are going to, again, I'm just toggling that view on and off. We're going to use our select tool. It automatically selects the la last uh, image that you made. We're gonna go in, we're gonna copy, and we're gonna paste it. And now we're going to mirror image, flip horizontally. There it is. If you hold your control key, you can use your arrows to slide the, the image over. So I'm using my arrows on my keyboard to kind of nudge this. It's really kind of up to you. If you had a small area that you were gonna nudge it to, like this is, the distance, distance isn't too far, you could do that. But this is, knowing that is really good because that way you can kind of fine tune things. So it's holding that shift, or sorry, the control key, and that allows you to use those little arrows. So let's just take a real quick peek. This is what we have. Really, really pretty easy. And so we did C's, now we're gonna do the D's. And again, I could do either side, I'm gonna stick with, I like to stay consistent with things. Um, I guess that's just my thing. So next I'm gonna go grab my tool again. And we're gonna go into here. And I'm going to do a regular left click. And then I'm gonna hold my control key and get around these curves. And again, it doesn't matter if you're right on top of those. Nobody's gonna notice or even know if it was on there. Fact of the matter is this is gonna turn out better than most hand applique's anyway. So now we're gonna just do a, a, a regular left click without control and close. That one is done. We're gonna select it. We're going to copy, paste. Um, you could do uh, control C which is copy and then control V which is paste for your hotkeys. But again, I wanna to try to keep this as simple as possible for those that aren't comfortable with maybe some of those other, other items. So we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna drop it into here. So that one's done. And again, let's take a look. This is what we have so far. So we're just moving right down the list and creating this. Um, let's go in and turn that back on. We've done D, it's time to do E. Now, this is gonna present a little bit different. Um, depending on what you're comfortable with, I'm gonna tell you in the video, I'm keeping this as easy as possible. However, whenever you sometimes simplify things, you're missing some other opportunities. If I were really, if I were doing this and feeling comfortable to doing something more advanced, I wouldn't let the stitches pop out down here. Reality is we are gonna have fabric covering it. And so I'm going to just do this the easy way and continue on exactly how we've been doing it um, throughout the whole design. But I could do a stitch around here and stop, meaning if I wanted to, make it so I didn't come across here and have stitches up into there, I could do that. I'm going to choose to let it have it individual stitches because it, it actually is going to, if I leave that end open, it actually is going to um, basically need me to do a little bit more if I wanna move this over to my scan and cut. So I'm gonna keep this simple just for the client that is um, working on this. But we're going to go in and grab our tool, our tool and we're going to finish this baby off. So again, I'm just going to do a regular left click. I am coming lower than that line because I want it to be in underneath this and inside here when it's all said and done. And now I'm just going to come up and I'm going to, I did two left clicks at the beginning at first just to keep this area maybe a little straighter. It's up to you. I'm holding control now, coming around. I went really wide. I could hit my backspace key and that would delete it or I could have left it because again, you are the designer, it is your choice, you're the one that gets to decide if it looks good or bad, not somebody else. That's what I always say, uh, It's I determine whether it looks good or bad. So I'm going to come in here based off of what I like by the way. I'm going to left click, I'm going to let that just do a straight line across, I'm okay with that. Now if you didn't want any of those stitches poking out up in the, to the top, so I'll show you how to do that um, without, but still letting this close up. 
there's a more advanced feature where you wouldn't let it close up. So when I look at this right now, I went low enough that when I bring my next set of stitching around here, it's going to cover. But let's say you didn't do that. You could always just select and then reshape and you could grab those nodes. I'm gonna draw a box around them. So I just grab those nodes and I could just move those down into here. And then that would bring all of my stitching lower and that would make sure you wouldn't even see those stitches once we put that next fabric on top. Okay, so we're going to select this and now what we're going to do is we're going to copy, we're going to paste, and we are going to go in and do flip horizontally. There it is. I'm going to grab that little guy, bring it over here, and we're going to drop it into place. I'm going to kind of look down here at the bottom, maybe bring it a little bit lower, just to make sure that it gets covered up. And it's going to get covered up anyway, because when I come across here, I'm going to make that, that be a thing. So because I'm going to digitize it to make sure it covers it. So now, I guess, let me show you the whole view minus the picture. So we'll go into here. This is what we have so far. All of this is creating that applique. And you see on the right side, it's just stacking up in the sequence view, all these pieces and the way that it's going to uh, applique this down. All of them have the three stitches already, or three, um, steps to each to create that applique, which again, that's what's so cool about the tool. It does it for you. So we're going to do Fs. So we're on the F section. We're going to go in. I'm going to applique. I'm going to start with just a single left click. I'm going to go lower than the line because I want these to kind of be hitting. So I, I did two single left clicks, the first two clicks that I made, not two on top of each other. This was a left click. This was a left click. Then I went into the control left clicks as I come around these curves. So now we're gonna just continue through. And again, this is our F. I'm gonna do a left click and a left click to come down lower. And I'm gonna let the system close it up. And this is what we have. So our stitches are well below um, that area. A little tough to see just color wise. I'm gonna select the design that I just created. And again, copy, paste, and then we're going to flip horizontally. We're going to grab that baby, we're going to bring it over, and we're going to drop it in. There's alignment tools that help you align and do all those things. I think, again, what I'm trying to do with this video is help this client get this taken care of in maybe the easiest way possible um, right now. So. Everything looks good. We're going underneath there, which is going to be fine. So all these pieces, now we've done F. So the last thing we need is G. G is going to go over this, and it's going to cover all these little guys on here. So before I go through and I do G, I want to decide, I probably would like this stitching to come down a little bit underneath. I want it to go under the fabric. That way, there isn't a possibility of having uh, a negative space not stitched in here. So I think that's what I want to do. Again, this is... It's your call. Um, so we have still one more applique piece to make, to make, which is G. But we also have, these are going to be regular stitches. And you can decide what they are. You can have them satin stitches. You can have them decorative motifs, whatever you want them to be. Um, so I think I, what I want to do is I want to go in and I'm going to actually put these stitches down now. So I'm going to lay them in, in at this point here. So if we were to take, and that way it can lay, this is going to go over the top of it. So now what we're going to do is up top, we're going to go into our digitizing tool and select what we want to work with. Um, there's different options in here to, to do different things. Uh, the steel stitch is one that we could do. If I want to choose that, it's, it's an option. Um, but we also have different stitches down here. So let me kind of show you what's going to happen off to the side, not on top, just so you can get a better idea. I'll turn the, the, the picture view maybe off so it's less distracting somewhat. And I'm gonna scroll over here a little bit more to the side just to have some open space. So in here, if I were to go in and I were to take, I could do just something as simple as running stitch. That's just gonna be a straight stitch, single run. So same rules apply, you guys. If I'm doing left clicks, it's going to do just a straight stitch. If I hold control, it's going to do a curve. And then when I'm done, if I 
uh, want to, I can touch a right click and that will, that will finish it off. Right now, that's the stitch. It's just a straight stitch. And actually, let me do this because I want you to see how they, they sew out. I'm going to do a new window. So that's what's really cool about this software. You can have two windows opened up. So this is design one. This is design which has my work that I've already done. This is design two. This is just an empty page. So the reason I wanted to come in here is I want you to see how all these different things sew out. So again, this is just a run stitch. Holding control, we can do curves. And I can right click, that'll finish it. Well, if we leave this as a single run, it's going to sew out just like that as a single run. That's what it's going to be. I can also select that single run and over here under properties, I could go in, I could tell it I want it to be a double run. That means it's gonna go over itself twice and you'll see this as it goes through. It goes up and then, it, well, you won't see it. It's, it's kind of moving a little bit quick on there. Um, the next thing that we have that we can do, let's close out of here. And again, when I select this, we can go in and we can just kind of play with these. The reason it didn't do a double is because I didn't hit apply. You gotta remember, whatever you're doing, you have to hit apply. So now it's gonna go up and then it came back down. So now it did it twice. So that's a double run. And um, we can again go through and we can change these. Now I have this cool option, this is a motif. And then under motif, you can select a bunch of different motifs. So if you wanted to get really decorative with, with this, you could do something uh, or fancy, I would say, with motifs, whatever you want it to be. So if I wanted it to have something a little bit more decorative as that stem on the other side, I could do something like this. Let's turn on the 3D view that's over here on the left. This could be the stitching that we use. Kind of cool. So you can, again, th this is where it starts to get really fun and you are in total control over all of this. And then there's more to it. You can adjust those um, there are settings that you can adjust for that as well. Uh, I don't want to get into that right now because that's not what this is about. This is just to keep things simple. And we are going to go in and I know I'm trying to just get through this and move around a little bit quick so we can get this taken care of because again, this isn't what I was, my intent was not to go through every feature on the machine or sorry, the software. This is just the steel stitch. That will give you just your regular satin if you were to choose that. And that's actually what I'm going to use on the other. That's where we were headed. And that was under um, the tools here, digitizing tools, and then this one here. And it allows me to go in and change some features with how the density. All of that is over here in the properties. And then there's again, properties to go along with that. Um, you can make it a jagged edge if you wanted to. Again, I don't wanna take this too far. I'll show you what it on here, kind of some different things. But it's really your, if I chose both on Jagged Edge and Apply, you can go in and you can adjust the values and you can get different looks, okay? Uh, let's take that away. And again, that's just me making changes. So if you wanted to have a different look, you could create that. Let's go back over to our, our design. And we could actually even close out number two. Are we gonna save the, the, the design? I'm gonna say cancel, because maybe I wanna keep that page up to come in and, and work with. It just gives me another page to play with uh, without putting it onto my actual design. Okay, so here we are. Um, I want it to be in the steel stitch, and I wanna make sure that I don't have jagged turned on, which I do not, that's what I want. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose and decide how we're going to handle this. So how do we want to handle this next little move? And what I mean by that is I've got these that have to come down and maybe go back up. And then I've got a stitch that has to come over to here. We can treat these in a lot of different ways. We can do other run stitches to get us to certain spots. What I am going to do because it's a satin stitch, I am going to take this down and up. That's going to be its own thing. And then I'm gonna run a stitch straight across there, which is going to cover right over that, that center part. That's what I'm gonna to choose to do. Again, you get to decide what you wanna do. And I want these to actually cover this area right here. So that's why sequence wise, I want it to cover over the top of that. And I'm not too worried up here. Once I get up here, if I, was wor if I want it to be underneath, then I would move this, the, these stitches to a different sequence. I'm just gonna run it up to it and see what it looks like. So on here, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna to choose to do this little V in the center. 
with the steel stitch, which is what we have selected. I'm going to do a left click on here. And I actually am going to resequence this. I think what I want is I actually want this particular area to go underneath these guys here, but I want them to go on top of these here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe let's not do that. Let's just move it all the way top. We'll keep we'll keep this stitch as our very first stitch. It's going to go underneath all of them. Yeah, I kind of like that idea a little bit better. And if you don't, do it different. So I'm going to come up into here just a little bit because I don't want to have an area that's that's blank. So I'm going to do a left click, regular left click, and now I'm using my control key, and I'm coming down, and I'm going to get down to this bottom, and I'm holding control. I'm going to let go of control. I'm going to do a left click without control, another left click without control, coming back the other way, another left click without control, and now I'm going to hit hold control to get that curve, and I'm coming up all the way into here, and then I'm going to go a little bit inside with a left click. I'm going to do a right click, and that's going to finish it off. Okay, so that finished that steel stitch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and there's a there is a thing such a thing as uh, it's called pathing and that's where you would kind of plan this out maybe make a run stitch down to the bottom and do things a little bit differently that way so it's a little so it sews out a little bit better um, I'm going to oh sorry I didn't actually finish that sorry let's go back in I just did undo so let's redo our stitching that we had and let's put in that last line still the same stitch and I think it's actually already on there let me just make sure nope okay so let's finish that off with that last little run up not run but the steel stitch run is different so I'm just gonna take and I'm just doing two points I just ran that straight up and we're gonna right click and that's gonna finish this off so if I turn on 3D mode, we can see exactly how this is going to look. And I'm okay with, with, with exactly what we have on here. What I want to do is I want these set of stitches, which are over here in the on the right-hand side, down here at the bottom, you're going to see um, that's the last set of stitching that I did. So I can, I can scroll up and down in here and maybe I'll zoom this move this up so I can see those a little bit brighter but I'm gonna grab this file so I've got a hold of it right now and we're going to take and we're gonna move it all the way I'm just dragging it all the way up to the top so we're almost there I drag I, I dragged it all the way to that point I'm gonna grab a hold of it again so I've still got it and take it all the way to the very top. So now that's going to be the first thing that stitches out. So now if we look, it tucks underneath there. It's going to be underneath here. Now remember you guys, you can see that, but when you put this down, your applique, your fabric, it's going to cover right over the top of that. So I, I like to have it extended a little bit inside just to make sure that it does get that cover. And right now I've got these and they're going to actually cover over the top of that just right, well, right up to it. So we're, we're good because they come down to a nice point. So I love how it looks so far. We have only a couple more things to do. We have the base down here. Earlier I said we only had one piece to finish, but actually there's two little dots up here too. So we have G and then it looks like, um, yeah, we've got H and I up there as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this guy here and I'm gonna go back into applique. So we're back into applique. It's already on blanket. It's already on everything that we need it to be. I am going on my corners like this. This is what I like to do. It's kind of up to you. But if I want a nice corner, what I usually do is I'll do a left click, left click, left click. And then this happens to be straight across. I'm just going to come across here. I'm going to go right to that center point, basically. What well, I'm maybe not exact center, and that's OK. I'm going to the corners left click left click left click the reason I like to do a left and a left here I feel like I get a better corner transition when I do that instead of just going all the way across and doing a left click over there so now we're on the curve so I'm going to hold that control key I'm coming up and around 
a little bit higher than the area just to make sure that it gets to where I need it to be. Again, I'm holding control. And then at the end, I leave a space and I'm going to choose to let it close. And that's it. So now if we look, all of this is going to be right here. This is all going to be covered by fabric. Now where that gets a little complicated is you got to make sure that your threads, let's say if I was going to put a white fabric on here, that's where I'd have to go with a different process for me personally. Um, I'd either have to move these up, I'd have to do something because you don't want your threads, let's say it was a dark thread, a black or a blue, and then you put a piece of white fabric over the top of it, those are going to bleed through. So you got to be a little bit careful there. Um, if you feel like this area is just too low, you can click on it and you could adjust it up at this point. So, and I'm going to do that just by drawing this little square around those pieces and just moving them up into here. See, but what I don't want to do, so I want my stitches to be close to those other stitches. And I'd be very comfortable with that. And that way I don't have extra stitches going up into there. So this is where we can go back and we can make any of those little, you know, small changes that we may need to make. Right now I'm already in the, the reshape uh, section. So when I move these, it's already going to move uh, or be in that tool. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I want to, this is the end point which is fine in the start point. I'm going to just I'm going to pull this little corner down because I don't want that little edge this stitch peeking up through there. So again, that's where if I pull that down, it's just going to kind of finish that off. And you notice when I move that, it also changes your stitches a little bit. So you can do that to manipulate your stitches where you want them to be. Um, I'm okay with this uh, where it's at, but if I again, if I was using it a lot of it's dependent on the fabric that I'm going to be using. If I'm using a lighter fabric, that little green button is your start point. If I'm using a lighter fabric, uh, then I gotta be a little bit careful. Now, maybe I wanna bring this up because I could move this, actually, I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna tell you. There is an option where I can move that start point up closer to here, that little green area up closer to this one and make them the same color. They would be the same color so it could be continuous. Again, it's, it's something we can do uh, I'm not doing that right now because I'm trying to just keep this super simple, okay? But it is a part of it, and some of you are more comfortable going to a little more advanced. Let's take this little guy in here. Oops, keep that where it is. We're going to grab these stitches in here again. And again, that's my start and stop point. So let me just grab that guy. And I'm holding control to allow me to grab multiple points. So the control key allows you to have to grab multiple points. Now, see it's sticking up a little bit in there. So I want to, I still have a hold of those points. I'm going to drop that little point down there and I'm going to grab this one. So I'm moving them individually. And that's where I'm a little more comfortable. So again, the only time I do this is if I really felt like there's a possibility of my fabric, uh, or my stitches peeking through the fabric that's going to cover these. Okay, so that just kind of cleans that up there. If you felt necessary to move that in, you could do that, or this one over here. Again, depending on the, your fabric, it, it's it's going to be all right. So all of this is now created. We just have to do the I um, and the H. Um, again, H is before I. However, the, just like on here, we want the I to sew out first and then the H goes out on top. So I'm going to go into here. These look like these could be perfect shapes. So if we wanted to, we could do these as perfect shapes. I'll do that so you can see how that works. So in here, uh, again, I'm going to do a perfect circle just to show you guys shapes. So up top, there's an option for uh, next to the digitizing tools. We have, it says, it will say square or ellipse. It, it says when you put your, when you hover, not square, rectangle, when you hover your mouse over it, basically it's going to say rectangle depending on what the last thing is that you used while you were still in the software. If I grab the circle, now when I hover my mouse, it says ellipse. But what we're going to do is, and there's a lot to this, I could go in and we're going to create um, a circle. If I want it to be a perfect circle, let's say 
I don't want it to be perfect. Then you just drag your mouse and you get it however you want, just like you see on my screen. If I want it to be perfect, then I hold the control key because holding the control key, it makes it perfect. So that'll keep a perfect circle. So just holding your control key. So I'm gonna get that about as big as I think it needs to be. And I'm gonna kinda just, again, I'm gonna, holding control, I can just nudge that over with my arrow keys on my keyboard. And it looks pretty good. I like it where it is. If you want it smaller, you can make it smaller. Um, your sizing is in here, it's in millimeters. You can change that in the settings. I won't go into that right now. Um, but let's say we, we wanna go in. Now right now, because we didn't use the applique tool, right? It's pretty important. We need it to be an applique. So down here at the bottom, we have an option of all these quick um, options to change things. You'll find one that's at the bottom that has, it's kind of green and over here towards the right, it says applique. If I just click on that little guy, it does it for me, just like it did on the others, and it has the same properties. So just like that, it's done. Now, this is exactly the same as this other one over here. So I'm gonna do a copy, I'm gonna do a paste, and I'm just gonna bring that baby over and drop it in its place. Now, I want another perfect one right into here. You can decide if you want it perfectly centered or not. If you don't, then don't. If you do, well, there's alignment tools for that. Again, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. So I, I'm gonna grab my, my tool. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to hold control because control is what allows me to keep this a perfect circle. I'm gonna get it to about the size that I want it to be. Um, Let's bring it up into here. I'm just gonna drop it right where the other one is. So I know that that's how the pattern shows it. And I'm gonna change it to an applique. And the last thing that I need to do is copy, paste, and this is done. So we just created that entire block. Um, you know, doing this, if I wasn't explaining it, I could do it in probably 20 minutes or less. So video wise, it's probably gonna be an hour, hour and a half by the time we're done. But we're gonna go in, I'm gonna toggle this off. I'm gonna let this do a slow redraw so you guys can see this. And so remember we did the satin stitch first. So that's what it's creating right now is that satin stitch. And we're just gonna kinda let this go through and figure it out. You guys, there's so many features on this software. It's, it really is pretty fantastic. This is where I said how up here it is a jump stitch. I'm okay with that for now. But a lot of times when I digitize, I'll pat this so it would come down, do a running stitch up, come back down, do a running stitch down, and then come back up. Um, I'm gonna leave it like as it is. I think we're, we're pretty, pretty good where it is. So this is the sequence that it's going through. So it's gonna have you do these petals on here. It's gonna do all three of the, the white petals. It's gonna do them individually and then go to the next and the next. Um, but when this is done, I think you get the point of, of how it's gonna sew out. I'll just kind of grab this and move it quicker. So I'm now dragging it across that sewing simulation line. But that's how it's gonna be. That's how it's going to stitch out. The last thing that I wanna get into is our overall size. So uh, I'm gonna go in and get my select tool. I'm gonna to select all of this so it's all selected. You can also do Control A on your keyboard. That would do it as well. Um, and then we're going to go in and on the. I, I did a right click, so a right click on my mouse. If I go in and I group this, this is all now grouped together. So now when I click on it, it's just grouped as one. Um, it still sews out in the same order. It's just grouped, so it makes sure that it keeps everything consistent. Now, it tells me it's 856.5 millimeters wide. So at its widest width, which is right here, that's the width. And then its height, it says, is 851.1 millimeters tall. This is where I don't have any of the information really to, needed to know the exact height that um, the, the client needs it for. But the cool thing is, it's not that big a deal. Once this is created, right now these are all objects. So they can be manipulated and it'll keep the integrity of the design. It's really important when you are working um, when you save this in Floriani software, you want to save it um, in the WAF file because that way if you ever need to adjust it or change it, you're working with the pure artwork. Once you export it into a stitch file, let's say PES for Brother, 
it now becomes a stitch file and you could lose the integrity of how you want to edit. So I always save it as a WAF and then export it as whatever I need for my machine. So I'm not really great with millimeters. It's not my thing. So I'm not gonna, that's not gonna help me out. So I'm gonna go into tools. I'm gonna go into preferences. And under in preferences, there's a section that says environment. When I go into environment, I can change that from units to inches. And now we're a little more comfortable for Eric to be where he needs to be. We are at 33.33 inches. Now, I don't know the size of this block. To me, that sounds like a pretty big block, but maybe that's what it is. I have no idea. I'm only going off of the um, image that was sent to me. So, and again, up here, if you wanna adjust those, we already talked about how to do that. So I could go into here and if, at this point, I've got this, this image selected. Um, let's see what we've got uh, in properties. So I scrolled over under properties on this right hand, scrolled all the way over. And these are still showing in millimeters. So do you see where I have the option in here to change to inches? There's my inches. It's showing me it's 33.33 by 33.51. I want to maintain the aspect ratio when I size this because if I don't, it's going to get distorted. Let me show you. If I turn that off and I were to, for instance, change the width and let's say I change it to 50, well, the width is going to go to 50, but the height is going to stay the same. So I change it to 50. That's not what I want. If that's what you want, great, do it. Um, there's times that I definitely do want that. I'm going to undo that so we're back to normal. Over here in properties, again, I have everything selected. It's really important that you group this and it's all selected. I'm gonna scroll all the way over to the right and you'll see these little four arrows. When I click on that, we're gonna put, click, turn maintain aspect ratio back on and I'm in inches. And let's say this block is finished 14 inches. I don't know, maybe that's what it is. So you want, maybe you want it to be 12 inches by 12 inches. Um, here's what I would do. Because this says 0.33 and 0.51, I would only change the front half. So I'm gonna go 12.33 by, tw actually I don't need to do the next one because it says maintain aspect ratio. Um, and I'm gonna hit apply. This is now gonna put me roughly in that 12 inch range. If you want it exactly 12, then go ahead and do 12. It's really up to you. Um, and again, it's gonna adjust that other one there too. So right now, this is how this would be, okay? Uh, you may need have, have the, the need to change things on here, and if you do, that's okay. Uh, I should show you something that's, that I like to do as well. To do that, I'm going to ungroup everything. So we're basically done, but I'm going to, let's say I don't want that to be that, that far out. I could go into here, you guys. I could select that area over here on the left-hand side you also have the option um, to edit, let's see, I wanna edit my stitch. Sorry, it's this one here. You're gonna come down to this one here. When I click Stitch Edit, that's different. So look what happens. So when I'm on Stitch Edit, which is over here, I can now go into this guy and I could grab that and we can move that stitch down in. So if you individually don't like how something is showing exact, that's what's, again, super awesome about this software. You can grab a hold of it, just bring it in, and it's done. So you can fine tune this as well as you want it to be. It's really up to you. You can look around and find these areas all over that if you don't like how they're being handled, that's okay. But again, think about some of these. These are going to be covered. So you just have to remember that part of it as well. Okay, so that's really uh, my video for creating the uh, applique. And so. Um, there, I'll have an. I'll probably put out another video. I don't know how soon, but another video on you know maybe uh, using the scan and cut, turning this from what it is on here into a scan and cut type file, so the brother scan and cut could cut up, cut out all of these pieces um, instead of doing the traditional applique. Which again, I, I'm not going to go into all the details of how to do this and lay it down. We have other uh, classes for that and videos. There's tons of videos out there on applique embroidered applique. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I am going to go file. I'm going to choose um, save as. 
I always like to choose save as, and I always like to do that actually at the beginning. I want to change always the name. So I would go in and we're going to change that. I'm going to, uh, let's see, on this computer, I'll put it in my OneDrive and I'm just going to put it in temporary file for right now. And I'm going to put uh, applique block for my name for this. And I'll put block one because I don't know if I'm going to do more than that. Than that. So I'm going to save that. Again, it's a WAF file. I could change that, but I don't want to. Because if I want to size this, or I want to manipulate it, or I want to adjust something, I want the original file. So we'd hit save. So once we're done, you would go in, and at this point, you could go in, you could do save as, and you could change the file type to whatever your brand is. So for my client, she's using a brother. I'm going to go in and choose um, the baby lock brother on here, PSV9 is what, I, what they've got set. I could select that, I could save it, save it where it needed to be. At that point, I could pull it up on my machine and it's ready to go. So thank you for watching the video. Hopefully this answers questions for other customers that are out there and hope to see you soon in the store. That's really, really where we get to have all the fun. Thank you, have a good day.